Hi, this is Stu Harris with ITS Partners and I'm the Asset Management Team Lead. This is uh, my second video in the series of the procurement system of asset management. And in the first video, we, I went over uh, just a brief overview of each of the components. This video I'm actually going to set up in the following order under our quick start. The stock room, a company, and a catalog. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a new stock room. I've already got a couple set up, but I'm going to go ahead and add another one. These stock rooms are location based. So you'll have to actually have a location installed in order to use this function. And the stock room again is just any place that is where you would store your, your uh, IT purchases. And this doesn't necessarily have to be a physical room but it may it may help if it is a physical room to actually put that in the details. I'm just going to call this one my main my main stock room and I have to pick a manager someone that's going to manage that stock room it has to be a user within the system and I'm just going to grab one of my test users and assign that person as the stock room manager. Now I have to pick a stock room location yeah, and if you notice that there's a red asterisk next to those two fields, and th that means that it's a required field. Right now, I have a stock room in each one of my other locations. If I were to try and attach a second stock room to that same location, and if I try to apply this, it's going to give me an error saying that there's already one for that stock room or for that location. And I'll give this thing a second just to error out on me. And if you'll notice right down here, an error occurred saving changes. So what I need to do is I need to delete the association. And I'm going to reassociate to my one location, my main location that does not already have a stock room. Now it's not necessary to have one stock room per location. If your company doesn't need to worry about having multiple stock rooms, just have one stock room. That, that would be perfectly acceptable. But you would, you would need a stock room in order to... Uh, use this functionality. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this and then close out of this window. I do have, before I actually close this, I do have the ability to add in at this point some consumables in stock. And that would be the consumable catalog items such as like, for example, a power strip or a mouse or a keyboard something that's probably a, of a lesser value that you wouldn't normally uh, put an asset tag on. So I'm gonna go ahead and save what I've got and then close out of this window. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a new company. I've already got some companies in here. I've already got some catalogs set up, but I'm gonna to to go through this just as uh, demonstration purposes to put these in so that we can use them in the future videos. So the company I'm going to add, I'm just going to add a fictitious company and we'll add in then a catalog for that company. So in here I'm going to give it a name and we'll just call it Acme Company. I can fill in any of this data. I don't need to fill in this data, but I can if I, if I would like. None of these fields are uh, required to actually create a company. They're nice if you have somebody that's a procurement person, maybe is working with many companies, wants to have a repository for all this information, should there be a, a case when a secondary person would need to take over um, for purchasing, everything would be in one place. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my company, close out of my window, and then next I'm gonna actually have a catalog. So I'm going to make this really simple on myself and make this catalog, one catalog for this company. So we're going to have Acme Company Catalog. And then I have a place where in here where I can have associated catalog entries. I don't have any catalog entries created yet. I'm going to do that in the next video. And I can actually edit this and pull them in from the catalog. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put these in from the screens where we're going to create the catalog entries in the next video and associate them that way. 
So then I've also got the ability to associate some documents in here. These are nice if you have, for example, maybe you have the physical catalog as a PDF. You can actually add that in and have that PDF in here to be able to be viewed as from a central repository. The one, oh, I'm sorry, the two places that we have that are required are the catalog number, which is assigned automatically unless you have a reason to change this. The system number, the system assigned number should be fine. Next, I have to select a supplier that get, that is the supplier for this catalog. Again, I'm making this up easy on myself and I'm gonna use my Acme company that I created. And now we can see my association. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then I'll close my window. So the next step in this train of procurement is to actually set up my different types of catalog items and then assign them to the catalog. What this does is this gives the user the ability to go in, look at the catalog, pick some items off the catalog, and order them from procurement. That generates a procurement request. Then if procurement is approved, it can then generate a procurement or purchase order. And that's actually a physical purchase order. You can actually print that out and send that in as a PO if, if so desired. Otherwise, it can just be used to track the items within Alteris. So this is the end of this video. The next video that I'm going to do is going to be another short video. I'm going to go through and create each one of these consumable, fixed, and software catalog items. And then the last video is I'm going to go through and actually use these from the back end of the system to create the purchase request and the purchase order. And then at some point, we'll do another video on focusing on the software licensing compliance. Uh, it seems to be a very popular topic these days with trying to save some money that will pretty much follow up on what I've got going here. And it will tie into the software catalog item, which can generate a software purchase, which will be needed for that piece. So the next, again, the next video, we'll go through and actually finish the setup for procurement.